So it says how many flights have missing departure times? Missing meaning the value is unavailable or it's NA. Right? To do this, obviously, we can use the ease.na function. So we can say filter flights include only those rows for which this condition is true. Ease.na departure time. Okay, so if the departure time is missing, ease.na will be true and only those rows will be included in the results. Okay, so if you execute this line of code, filter flights ease.na departure time, uh, so you will get that here. So if you run it, you find that the result has 8255 rows, 19 columns. Okay, so the answer is going to be. 8255 and then we are saying how many flights have missing departure times what other variables are also missing for these okay so what you could do is take a look at the previous result and look at some other columns within that okay so in other words we could do view filter flights east or any departure and that is we are doing the same old filter but we are looking at the resulting data frame in our editor. Okay, so that's the result. So we can see obviously if departure time is missing, departure delay is missing, arrival time is missing, arrival delay is missing, and uh, air time is missing, that is the amount of time it's spent flying in the air, that is also missing. Okay, so I would think that these flights represent cancelled flights. Okay, so departure delay, arrival time, arrival delay, air time, all of these are missing. So I would think my hypothesis is that these all represent cancelled flights. Okay, let's do a little bit with the auto MPG data frame. Now that data frame is it's currently a data frame. You know, when you read it with uh, read.csv, you get a data frame. Uh, but what we want to do is to read it as a data frame and then convert it into a table because it's just a table is a little bit more user friendly when it comes to working with it. Okay, So let's see how to do that. So first we're going to do uh, read it from a CSV file just like before. And then you can always convert it as table auto. Right. So there's a function called as underscore table. You can pass a data frame and you'll get back a table. Okay, of course, you could do everything on uh, dplyr just with data frames, everything will work. Uh, but when you print out the results and so on, Tibble is a little bit more user friendly. You know, it prints out the 10 rows, it shows you the data types, uh, and it gives you a little bit more information than just the regular uh, data frame. Okay, so we've converted into a table. Now let's try and answer some of these questions. How many four cylinder cars are there overall? And then let's do it with dplyr filter and let's also do it with the regular old syntax for data frames. Okay, so we are saying four cylinder cars, so it's very easy. We can filter and then simply say cylinder cylinders equals four. So we can do this filter auto comma cylinders equals four. So you'll get a collection of all the four cylinder cars, whatever the result is. Now, if you had done it with the old syntax with the square brackets, then we would have done it like this auto of auto dollar cylinders equals four comma which is all the columns okay so in uh, in dplyr with filter you're not having to specify the columns you want okay you can we'll see later on a syntax to do that uh, by default we don't need to do that okay so auto of auto, this does the job so the syntax here is slightly different you can avoid doing this you know dollar stuff just a little bit more clean and it's a lot more easier to read this and understand here you've got to do quite a bit of processing to understand what's going on and as the conditions become more complex this will only become worse okay so here let's see let's list the six cylinder cars with mileage of 20 or more and then again compare it with the old syntax so this is with the uh, with the new syntax filter dplyr filter auto cylinders equals six and we are saying six cylinder cars with mileage of 20 or more. So both the conditions have to be met. So we can just put a comma and put the next condition. Or of course, we could put the and 
and put this condition. The result would be the same. Okay. So this is the old uh, the new syntax. Old syntax is, looks like this: auto of auto dollar cylinders equals six, and auto dollar MPG greater than or equal to twenty. Okay. So here you don't have a choice of just putting a comma, because within a data frame, a comma means you know rows and columns. The comma has a different meaning than what it has here. Right. So here you have to put an and, and then put the other condition. So we are repeating a lot of uh, auto. Uh, and the dollar etc okay so we can see that the new syntax is uh, with the plier is just a lot cleaner of course they accomplish exactly the same thing but it's just a lot cleaner okay so here we are asking the question what are the different values for cylinders in the file right in other words uh, you've got four cylinder five cylinder six uh, and eight cylinder i think that uh, those are the different values so we just want to print that out so the way to do that, of course, is uh, we already know we can get the cylinders and then just say unique. Okay, so we can say unique auto dollar cylinders. This has nothing to do with dplyr, uh, but it's just something useful, and I reviewed it. Okay, how many cars have five or eight cylinders and have less than hundred HP? Okay, so we can say this cylinders in C58, which is five cylinders or eight cylinders, and horsepower less than 100. Okay, so you can do this this bit. So here we are looking at what is the minimum displacement for cars with six or eight cylinders. Write a single R expression. Right, so here what we need to do is to first find uh, the list of cars with six or eight cylinders and then find uh, the displacement for each of those cars and then find the minimum right of course you could write it as separate expressions first do a filter get the data frame and then from the data frame extract the components and get the minimum but I'm saying write a single R expression so clearly we could do min of right minimum displacement min of filter to get this condition and then do a dollar displacement okay so we can say min fil filter auto cylinders in c68 right so if you look at this starting from filter up to this parentheses that's a table or a data frame that is returned and then on that we say dollar displacement so we get all the displacement values and then we put a min around that to get the overall result okay so you could combine many of these things into one single expression. Now we look at another point which is create a list of cars with four cylinders and mileage less than 25 that is cars which either meet this condition four cylinders and mileage less than 25 or have a displacement greater than 100 right so the and is between this and this so it's basically four cylinders and less than 25 mileage less than 25 or displacement greater than 100 right so if you have either these two or just this it will work okay so for example you may have a car with uh, five cylinders uh, and mileage uh, you know whatever 25 so it doesn't meet this condition but if its displacement is greater than 100 then it meets this condition it works right so it looks like a and B or C okay so it's going to look like this filter auto cylinders equal to 4 and MPG less than 25 or displacement greater than 100 right so these two are going together and this goes separately okay now the important point that comes up here is when you have several boolean operators chained up so for example you've got and and or so you've got A and B or C okay so in this case the way it works is the AND has a higher precedence and therefore first it's going to do the AND part of it right first it's going to do cylinders equal to 4 and MPG less than 25 and then it's going to do or displacement greater than 100 right so it's almost as if we put parentheses around this expression okay that's but you didn't have to do it because anyway AND has a higher precedence 
this will get done first okay as opposed to this condition create a list of cars with four cylinders or mileage less than 25 and displacement greater than 100 so in this case because and has a higher precedence if you didn't put the parentheses what it would do is it will do first this part right because we are saying a or b and c since we put parentheses around the a or b it's going to do that first okay and then it's going to do the and but if we didn't put the parentheses then it will do mpg less than 25 and displacement greater than 100 first and then it will do cylinders equals 4 okay so if you don't put the parentheses the result would be pretty different that's what i'm emphasizing here these two things right so in this case i have the parentheses in this case i don't have the parentheses okay so if you have the parentheses obviously it's going to do this first and then do this which is exactly what we had in the previous slide if you don't have the parentheses it's going to do it first it's going to do this and then do that so it looks like this right so the net effect of this without the parentheses is b and c first because and has a higher precedence than or okay here too and has a higher precedence but by putting parentheses we forced it to do these two together okay so you have to be a little careful when it comes to situations like this okay so this completes our discussion for this week uh, next week we'll consider additional dplyr functions and now that you have a good idea of how dplyr works we'll be able to go a little bit faster uh, next week and cover many more functions this week we were able to look only at one function the filter function next week we'll look at all the other functions of dplyr